Welcome everyone to another video. Hope you guys are having a great week thus far. Your man's has done a video like this before and I haven't for a while, probably like two years. Like last end of like 2018 was like my Christmas, Christmas wish list. Well done. But I thought I'd bring that back because some people have been asking me what style or what kind of garments and pieces and shoes and shit. Like what are you looking for to cop? And if you guys haven't checked out my recent podcast, which I uploaded on Tuesday, Go ahead and check it out. It's with my friend Ruben and we go into depth about like fashion in general, what the values are behind different brands, like why we gravitate towards brands. Like it's a really, really good podcast and I really loved working with Ruben. So if you haven't already, follow the Instagram, Rock the Deal Podcast. Go ahead on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts too. Uh, but with all that selfless plug out of the way, today's video is basically going to be what kind of stuff I'm vibing with lately and what kind of, you know, what pieces do I really want to get this year? The title will be like Grail Wishlist or Wishlist of 2020 or something like that. Um, these are by no means I'm definitely going to cop because a lot of it is expensive. I can title this like $50,000 Grail Wishlist, which is bullshit because I'm not going to do that. The sun's pissing me off, so fucking give me a sec. Stop being a cunt, mate. I've got a list on my laptop, which I gathered over the past like half an hour. Just stuff that, you know, what's been on my mind lately as of, you know, researching and just watching stuff on YouTube, etc, etc. So first up is one piece which, oh God, this sun's fucking killing me. One piece which I've eyed off for a, a while, probably like halfway through 2019-ish, is the Isimiyaki En Blessé single breast, two button blazer. That piece is just elegant, beautiful, sophisticated, and so corporate but like not at the same time but the two button blazer is so you can wear it so casually too you can wear a white tee underneath tucked in you can wear like a turtleneck underneath or you can wear a shirt and with my, my matching um on blessed pleats dude it's just an it's just perfect and that's like what i really want to get definitely in uh this coming year of 2020 the price point is a bit hefty it's like six to eight hunch <sighs> But with that piece, it's something where you can have in your wardrobe all year round because you can wear it for the winter time when you go out or you can wear it in the summertime with shorts because it's a very lightweight fabric. So that's on my list. Next up is something which I've always wanted since the second time I went to Japan and that is a purple label or North Face purple label jacket coat. Um, it's very broad. It is very vague to label something like this. But with purple label from North Face, as you guys know, purple label is based only in Japan. You can only get purple label in Japan. So with those certain products, they use Japanese fabrics, they use Japanese, you know, style of cutting and everything. It's all styled, all made in Japan. And yeah, it's something I really, really want to get because, you know, basic North Face, like, you don't want to be like the typical white bitch that wears North Face. You want to rip out that purple label shit and it's just a fucking flex, bro. But moving on is a vintage Filson wool overshirt. So Filson is a brand which actually one of my subscribers who recently told me about this because he has his own vintage store. He gets our Filson vintage and just the quality and the cuts are just impeccable. And the wool overshirt is just something iconic, which I know I could wear all the time. Just that nice, really dark gray wool or a light khaki wool would just be, oh, just fucking slap. I could get the Uniqlo U one, which actually drops tomorrow, but your man's gonna have money for that. But with the Filson, I'll just really look on Etsy, Grails, and eBay as well, and just come across something. They are a little bit pricey, but I feel like you get your money's worth being vintage, and you know, it can really be used once again, all season round. So, moving on. This is inspiration. This is something I'm definitely not gonna buy. This, like, is what, ins not really inspired me, but it was more so, like, anyways. It's this Marjala leather shirt. It's like a leather overshirt from Marjala. It's on Farfetch for like five bloody stacks. That is just like, you're not gonna drop five stacks on a shirt. Like that's that's not me, like at all. Because leather's coming back this like, you know, for 2020, that leather overshirt, I feel like would just be a vibe for winter time. Um, I've seen someone rock it and it looks fucking sexy and I really, really wanna get one, so. Leather shirt, you can find them at Zara, eBay, Thrifts. Yeah, Zara is like actually has a good option, but a little bit pricey for Zara. But, um, or ASOS too. The one I've seen is on ASOS and it's... 
fucking mint. Oh yeah, and another. I've got written here the helmet laying leather shirt from Spring Summer '97. That is like, I've seen it on Grail before. It is. Oh my god, it's in, it's just beautiful. It's a white slash cream leather shirt helmet laying like from back in the day archive type shit. It's beautiful. But um, those are, like the two inspirations for the leather shirt that I want to find, especially with like a two pocket style, which is just perfect. So moving on is something which I know I can come across is a Carhartt vintage work jacket. It's very plain and simple. It's a work jacket from Carhartt. Gotta be vintage, cause you're not gonna find, yeah, you can suss like the Detroit, is it Detroit chat? Why is that such a fucking tongue twister? Detroit jacket, thank you. The work jacket, I can find eBay, Etsy as well, and Grail too. Just the Carhartt workway vibe is something I've always been into. It is the thick piece, so it will do justice in the winter time. And it's just a, it's a nice steeds. You can't go one video without mentioning fucking steez. Moving on with the whole vintage theme, definitely something I want to cop this season is a trench coat. This is from the 1920s. The main inspiration for the trench coat is from Peaky Blinders. I love when they rock like two piece or three piece suit and they've got just the trench over the top, whether it be a matte coat, whether it be like a simple uh, single breasted coat, or it's like a massive military trench coat. That's the way that I definitely want to go with this season because the trench coat vibe I was always shined I shined away from it because it's really long I always rock I always like to go with proportions rock like my crop staff wear high-waisted trousers alligate alligate No elongate my legs, but with the trench you can still do that and just have another layer over the top um, So that's something I definitely want to look towards grailed etc etc you guys know the gist but those are just for the jackets and shirts and outerwear pieces. T-shirts, I just want to go vintage. It's something, it's very vague, just vintage tees. But I would really love to go like film tees, cartoon tees, race car tees as well. Such a nice vibe. And just, you know, just funny stuff here and there, whether I come across. So it's, that's pretty vague. But moving on, we're getting to like the bottoms, which I've been really eyeing off. One of them is just like a simple pair of grey wool slim trousers a nice dark gray wool once again in peaky blinders they i love the break that they have on their trousers they sit right on top of a boot or a chelsea or anything like that and it works tremendously well and being the wool fabric you can maybe find that thrifted yeah you can probably go yoji for that type of wave but once again price point is like you're paying like over a stack or something like that whether i be go was that even fucking English? Whether I go eBay or thrifted, I can maybe find something similar. It's just the fit of trousers are quite hard to get right. But moving on, uh, move, sticking with the blazer from On Blessé, which I mentioned at the start. One thing I definitely want to get this season is the straight cut, long pair of trousers from Isimiyaki On Blessé. I want to get a nice pair of just black straight legged, not wide, but just a straight leg all the way that drapes over a silhouette, whether it be an Air Force One, whether it be a sneaker, anything like that. I'm, I, I like my crop trousers, but eventually I do want to just have a nice pair that are long because I don't want to wear cropped all the time because sometimes it just doesn't suit. So with the En Blessé, there are some on Farfetch and Essence too. I'll probably wait for the sale because with the long pair, you have to worry about sizing too and stuff like that. Yeah. But yes, that's in like a black or like a light gray would be awesome. So moving on, I need these back. My Rick Owens, crop trousers from Forever Lion slash TE material. Oh man, I miss those pants so fucking much. Like you don't understand how much I miss them. They are such a versatile, high, high as fuck quality pair of trousers that you can wear for any occasion like you can oh it's just dumb hard and so dumb of me to let them go but that's something i'm definitely gonna pick up this year no doubt when i get full time first pay straight i'm literally gonna find them straight away sticking with the rick Owens theme once again with another pair of crop trousers is the slash y pair of uh, rick Owens crop trousers these are uh viscose and acetate blend so it's a lot more of a drapey avant-garde like type of fit and that's something which I mess with heavy. I love that drapey design from Rick and something I want to dive into when getting another pair of Rick Owen pants. Once again, they are very pricey, so you just going to have to look on Grail for something like that or look on the sale for Essence and Farfetch and stuff. Um, but moving on, another one which I regret it, I'm sticking with the Rick Owen's theme because this is all the stuff that I want to get all in one go. 
Yeah. It's the actual um, Preach Cargos, which I sold a while ago. Unfortunately, that was like a nylon material, which I didn't mess with. I didn't quite like it. The fit was okay, but it I just couldn't walk. It was so stiff and rigid. Whereas this time around, I'm going to spend a bit of money. I'm going to try and find a pair of Creech Cargos in the Slash TE material once again. That TE material is just so iconic and so durable. You can wash it time and time again, and it just maintains its shape. And especially with Creech Cargos, the only thing is that it is quite rare to find. That could be a potential grail. But with the Creech Cargos, if I look on grails, there might be the TE material pop up. But moving on, uh, something which I've owned before, but actually not this model. I want to go for a pair of wax denim. I know it's a little bit like, like really? Because I want to venture, I, I, you know, obviously I said before, I want to go for that leather overshirt. I don't want to go full leather pants. I ain't going to fucking do that. I've already got tree stump thighs as it is. I look like a fucking mess. But with Nudie, they've got this Lean Dean Black Minded Denim, which is actually their form of wax denim. So it has that nice shimmer, that nice texture that you can get. So if I do wear an all black fit, I can mix it up with textures with those leather pants being more of a wax as well. So it is a little bit different, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm willing to do it. Look, it's a steez. It's a, it's a fucking good steez. Um, and you, know, you can just beat them all day as well, which is good. So those are just for the pants. Now we're getting to like the shoes, which I've been you know eyeing off lately. The first one is actually a custom Air Force One which I found on Instagram when my friend sent it to me and I was like, holy shit, that is a good custom Air Force One. Once again, I might as well label this as a Rick video. It is a custom Air Force One with the Rick Owens dunk design with the milk dunk. So we've got like the black and white design and the translucent outsole and midsole on an Air Force One. It's just so hard. Like it is just, a, it's not like a regular pair of Air Force Ones. Like a, that, it's just a hard design. I don't, like whoever came up with the fucking props to you, man. Jesus Christ, they're so dumb hard. It's something I definitely will get uh, this coming season because I really love Air Force One. I mentioned in my podcast with Ruben, we definitely really love the wave of an Air Force One that's just beat and you can just wear all the time, especially for the price range too. Yeah, the customized ones, you pay like 160 or 180, but just regular AF ones, you're looking at like 120, which is really cheap for what you and me like. So I feel like with the custom ones, it's just a bit different, which is good. But moving on, something which I probably don't, uh, I don't think I'm gonna find anytime soon, they are quite hard to come by, is the Kiko and Camper collaboration. And they're the loafers, they're a black and white loafer. It's a very simple design with the black and then the hints of white, which actually go towards the toe box and around the outside of the loafer. I feel like it's a really beautiful design and they do have a like a forest green or a dark green pair as well. But with this one, it's just gonna be hard to come by. Just in my size, they are pretty rare as it is anyway. Um, but that's like more of like a grail wish list kind of thing. And before, before I forget, you guys know, Navigates by Dior, that'll always be on my list, no matter fucking what, 2007. By the time I buy them, I'm gonna be paying like two and a half stacks and I will pay that one day. <laughs> it's so dumb. But yeah, those are like grail wish list along with my Parachute jacket from Isimiyaki from 96. That jacket, I know, I know I will own one day. That is just something I've eyed off for years and I know I'll come across it one day. Maybe, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, anyways, um, another brand which got introduced to is actually called Veja or Veja. It's if I'm pronouncing that right, but people say, in Australia, people say Veja's. So with the uh, silhouette of the Veja, I really like this actually called the V10. I want to get in like an all white design with the uh, black V logo and the black heel tab. With Vayas, I'm pretty sure that I either use recycled leather or vegan leather. It's one or the other. So once again, it's all about sustainability. And with the Vayas, you do get your money's worth. I've heard they're incredibly comfortable. And when they're broken in, it just has a really nice design to it. And lastly, we'll get into some accessories, which I've been thinking of lately. I did say like one or two years ago, I definitely want to step up my accessory game. I kind of have a little bit. Um, if you guys are wearing these two rings are actually from Japan, uh, both got them thrifted and then that is from Acne Studios too. It's actually quite nice, but it tarnishes, which is like, it's kind of a bit of a shit steez, if you know what I mean. But I definitely want to go like Chrome Hearts for sure. Gotta go Chrome Hearts just cause it's so, it's so historical and it's so Japanese steez that you know I've got a vibe with one day. 
And being Chrome Arts is expensive, but you do get your investment in it, if that makes sense. You will never lose value on Chrome Arts, which is beautiful. And then moving on to another ring brand, which I know I've said like two years ago, is Workstat. I definitely want to go towards that Workstat vibe. This one reminds me, this is like this pinky ring, which I have, which is like a Workstat vibe, just because it has that four ring stack and then one overflap in the other. I really love it. Um, so with Workstat, I just, it's that kind of, avant-garde and just stacked on rings type vibe, which I really love, which I definitely will get one day. And one more, one more thing, is actually from Comme des Garçons. It's a tote bag, it's pricey, but with tote bags, I don't know, like, everyone rocks side bags, like head porter, I mean, I unfortunately sold mine, but the porter bag is a wave, it's good, it's a, the amazing quality. But with tote bags, you can just fit more, and it's not so like, right here tote bag you can have on the side it's an all leather black tote bag from Comme des Garcons it is about three or four hundred is quite pricey but once again like you're gonna have it for ages it's gonna just break in the right places if that even makes any fucking sense I'm trying to justify why like why I'm gonna buy it because it's so expensive because even though it's just a tote bag but at the end of the day it's you know almost like a design handbag. I don't know why I'm trying to justify it like that, but I'm sure you get what I mean. If you guys did enjoy this video, let me know what you guys are gonna cop for this year. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next week. Don't forget we upload Tuesdays and Thursdays. Subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and I will see you soon. I'm out, guys. Peace.